what's going on guys back with another meter video here and this video is going to be about the mystery of the micro amp setting the setting on your meter that a lot of people don't know what the heck it does we use our volts we use our ohms we use our continuity we know what the little thermometer is for but then guys see this little ua up there at the top and they don't know what the heck that does that is micro amps and the sole purpose of that setting on our meter is to check flame rectification on a gas furnace and that's just a fancy way of saying we're checking the flame sensor now we're working on a pulse furnace here some of you newer guys don't even know what the heck this is because you weren't even born when these things were put in this thing is purring like a kitten and it's been running for a while now this unit was actually put in in 89 well no that one might be a 92 actually because you go by that serial number there uh, but as long as these things are running okay and the CO levels inside the duct and inside of my exhaust pipe check okay, then I'm fine leaving these things running. Those were some of the best furnaces ever made, but they're just a little different. So on our normal furnace, right up here at the top, we would have our burner box and all our flames would be running. Um, if your igniter or your hot surface igniter is over here on the right hand side, it's gonna fire that right hand burner first and it's gonna travel each burner going over to the left and your flame sensor is always mounted in the furthest burner away from where the ignition happens because the purpose of that is, it is telling that furnace that the flames lit all the way across they didn't stop in the middle somewhere and you're just spraying gas over here on the last two it's telling that furnace there is a flame in front of me i'm in a flame right now it produces what is called micro amps that is a dc reading it is a reading so small we can't measure that with our current clamp so we have to have that ua meet reading on our meter and we have to do that with our test leads and we'll hook that up here in a minute but usually on a typical furnace your flame sensor will be mounted over here in the end and the easiest way to get to it is to just pull the wire off the bottom you want to use some alligator clamps on the end of your test leads and you're going to hook one of those to the male spade that is hanging down from the flame sensor itself and then you want to hook your other one to the wire that you pulled off of that now if that flame sensor is too hard to get to, there's too much in the way, too many vent pipes and wires and safety switches, you might be able to come down to your blower compartment on the board itself and follow that wire. That wire is always going to be a white wire that's kind of coated with this cloth looking stuff. On these pulse furnaces, they use this orange wire here, but on the um, modern day furnaces that wire is almost always a white wire that's wrapped with some kind of cloth looking stuff you'll you'll know what it is when you see it and you can just follow that all the way down to the board and on the board there will be a terminal that that's plugged into and it will say sense or flame sense something like that just like right here this is our ignition control on a pulse furnace and you see sensor so, if that ever drops below a certain rating, then it's basically telling the furnace it's not safe to run anymore. You need to turn off. And on most modern furnaces, if you start dropping down into the ones, like below a two, you start getting down toward 1.8, you're getting kind of low, 1.7, 1.6. Most of them are probably gonna start cutting out around a 1.4, 1.2 and that's when you're gonna have problems with the furnace not wanting to run. It'll ignite, it'll only stay lit for a few seconds and then it goes out. And you're thinking, what's going on with this thing? Well, it's your flame sensor and you have to pull that thing out and clean it. 
But before you do that, you want to verify that you do have a low reading and that's what's causing your problem. So watch what happens when we pull this wire off of here. Okay, we're not sensing a flame anymore. You heard the furnace shut off. This is not electrocuting me. I'm okay to touch this. Even if I had my bare hands, I can touch that, that's okay. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna hook one of our test leads to the wire I pulled off that's going back to my flame sensor. And again, this is just because on pulse furnaces, that flame sensor is mounted back in behind a compartment that you don't wanna have to try to get into that if you don't have to. See our gas valve just lit. Now watch what happens when we don't get our flame sense. All right, see that only ran for just a few seconds. And the board did not get proof of flame, so it shut the furnace off as a safety precaution. So now I'm gonna take my other alligator and I'm gonna go to that spade terminal over there. So that's just like if you were hooking one of your alligators to the spade on your flame sensor hanging down at the bottom of the burner compartment and then hooking the other one to the wire. So I'm just in line with that. So my red goes to there, my black is on this wire, and now you can see that we are getting a reading down there on the bottom of the screen. And see, this is the way the auto mechanics used to have to do it back in the day before clamp meters came out that had the capability of reading DC amps through the clamp. If they were trying to troubleshoot a problem with a car, they would have to take a wire and cut it in two and strip it and then hook both their meter leads to one end and to the other and measure the current through the wire. On a multimeter that doesn't have a clamp, there's a setting designed just for doing that on the meter and it's like a 10 amp setting and that's used for measuring current when you don't have a clamp. But these clamps are very convenient but because this is such a small reading, that's microamps, that means thousandths of an amp. Whenever you see that U there, that's, that means micro 1,000. So that is the reading that we're getting. And you can see some time ago, we had recorded this here. This is a good idea to do on your furnaces. We recorded it as 3.6. So now we can keep up with that. If I was having a problem with this furnace and I checked this reading and this was way below that, if I was down in the twos or the ones, then I know I've got a problem with my flame sensor and I've got some buildup and I'm gonna need to remove that and clean it or possibly even replace it. So it's a good idea to jot down your flame readings on the furnace somewhere. When you guys are out there doing a maintenance, that should be a part of what you're doing is checking your flame sense to make sure that's okay. And it's a good idea just to have that written down on the furnace just so you can track that over the years. So you can see that we're just making a loop through our test leads, through that wire, and the other lead is up to there. So that kind of takes the mystery out of that setting. You need to understand what all the different settings on your meter do and how to use them. If you ever put volts through that, if you are ever on that setting right there and you touch voltage with your two leads and you go to 110 or 240, then you're probably gonna tear that setting up on your meter. Some meters are fused internally and you will pop a fuse that you could open up the back of your meter and take that out and put a new fuse in and then you would be working again. And then some of them, you'll just completely take out that setting on your meter and now it will be useless. So just remember that. You never ever have your meter set on that setting, on that UA, and take voltage. This is such a small reading right here. It's almost nothing. And this is an amp current rating through the wire. Not really any kind of voltage. So that way, you're gonna know what that reading is for on your meter. You're gonna know how to apply that and use that in the field. You're gonna know how to use that for diagnostic purposes with your flame sensors to see whether it's time for it to be cleaned 
or replaced, you're going to know that that's the problem on the furnace. If you take that reading when the furnace is malfunctioning and you have like a 1.2 on there and then you remove your flame sensor and clean it up and put it back in and take that reading again and then it jumps up to you know a, a three point something or a four point something you know furnaces run different then you're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that was the problem look how much my my micro amp reading came up when i cleaned my flame sensor and then you're going to find that when that furnace starts up that it's going to continue to run now because that flame sensor is now over there in the flame it's heated up it's producing micro amps going back to the board and it's telling the furnace that we're in a safe condition to continue running. So I hope that might help some of you newer guys out understanding what that reading is for and how to apply that. If you have any questions about it, just leave me a comment below there. I always try to respond back to you guys because you know, I appreciate you watching my videos. So if you're going to take the time to do that and leave me a comment, then I'm always going to try to get back to you. And I'll try to answer your question as best as I can to help you out. Um, you know, when I first started out, that was one of the mysteries that I just didn't understand for a long time. So if I can help to solve that mystery for some of you guys, then I'm glad to do that. So anyway, you guys, if you like the video, leave me a thumbs up leave me a comment below there if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and do that and i will catch you on the next one